figure out what I'm going to eat or serve, we want balance, right? Not only in flavors and textures, but also in health. As a health supportive chef, I'm primarily looking for not only taste, but the components and that they're healthy. So, uh, like any good cook, or especially uh, since I'm half Italian here, right? everything starts with onions and garlic, right? And then I have in here, I have a very interesting mushroom. It's a puff mushroom. And it looks like a bowl. I already cut up the rest of it, so I can't show it to you. I have um, red um, mushrooms. And I have under here some peppers. So I already did some prep. But instead of having 80 bowls, I just put everything in here. Because these are the soft items, right? So they're all going to cook around the same time. The Brussels sprouts, remember I was mentioning before, we have a wide variety because we're still in October, but we still have vegetables coming in from the warm weather and now the fall and winter crops are coming up. So we have Brussels sprouts. Hard vegetable, I'm going to keep those separate. So as we are um, some of my pilots start up right away. As we are oil free, and I want to hear a little bit about more about that from you guys, about that um, concept. We're not going to put any oil in the skillet. I'm going to heat it up. This looks like it's on. Yeah, that's the back one. And then I'm going to use, remember that stock I mentioned before that I made with the seeds from the butternut squash? I'm going to use that, okay, as my base. If you guys like steam broccoli and garlic or something, use that. You know, you might start with water, but use a stock, right? It has the nutrients and some sweetness or flavor. So that's like instead of thinking, you know, uh, of the oil. I don't know what you guys do. Right, you're no oil. So when you cook, you can do a dry skillet, but we want things moist, right? So what are some of the things that you guys do? I use wine. Wine, great. Wine, we have yeah, wine on the table. Excellent. Right. So there's yeah. options, right? And there's always alternatives. I love that the A word, right? Alternatives, because that's what we're about. And if it's too costly or it's not good for you, there's always another solution. So when I do cooking classes, this is a template for a uh, to say, but you can have any bean, any seasonal vegetables, right? It's just mixing and matching, right? This sea salt, this gravy, all I did was I took some of this butternut stock and I made um, a slurry with sorghum flour and I did use water and I just made a gravy like you would do, you know, a traditional white flour, meat stock gravy. I just use a different vegetable stock and sorghum. It's very plain with a little bit of sea salt. Sorghum, you can get from Whole Foods or Mrs. Green's. Sorghum flour. It's gluten free. And it's very nice in, in gluten free baked goods because it keeps the um, moisture in. So here I have my lid. I'm going to take my tongs and just you know let this steam a little. I don't want to evaporate too much. And then I'm going to add my Brussels sprouts because they cook the longest, right? Now, I should have probably put those in a little while ago, but I wanted you guys to see it. I'm just a sea salt here. And I'm going to cover those. And I'm going to see, those are going to cook pretty rapidly. And then um, I'm going to top, I'm going to throw some Kalamata olives in at the end. So I'm mindful of the amount of salt I'm going to use, right? Because these have a salty brine. Mm -hmm. And then some artichokes I'll just garnish with. And I also have some fresh parsley as well. So those were grilled already? Yeah, I just put them on because they're going to be on the side. Um, so health benefits. As you may know, mushrooms are a great source of drawing toxins out of the body. Uh, I do not suggest eating raw mushrooms. Um, I went to the Natural Gourmet Institute for Health and Culinary Arts and we study different foods and the properties of foods. And one of the things that has been found, and I'm not sure if you guys have found this in your research, but uncooked mushrooms can be carcinogenic. Yeah. Right. So I always cook my mushroom. I mentioned the peppers before, parsley, great source of stimulating the body to, to uh, convert 
vitamin K, the vitamin D in the body. Of course, we need the sun. That's our best source of uh, vitamin D. So these are steaming pretty quick, right? Bright green. We want to keep things bright. So now I'm going to add my mushrooms and my peppers. And just use a tongue to toss. And then when do you think the wine should go in? In a little while after this happens. I have a great seasoning. I don't always tell everybody that. Does everyone ever hear of the company Vogel or Urban Mare? They are a great company from France. They also have tinctures like for sore throats like elderberry, antiviral, and Urban Mare is an herb sea salt. This one has a bunch of different herbs. It's all organic. It has kelp in here. It's a great alternative to sea salt. You can use this on um, as table salt. I actually get this. I'm on a like a recurring delivery on this. This is a large size. It's really excellent. So if you're making like a soup or something, you just like add a little instead of salt. It really gives, like you know how salt makes things pop? This is great. How much is this stuff sorry? It's kind of high, it's 360 milligrams, but you are not using as much. Now people know why sea salt and not table salt, like under the ground, right? Dead fossilized salt from like dead animals, dark, no oxygen, no life. Sea salt is from the sea. The nutrients that are in the sea salt are the same minerals in our bodies that we need to replenish. Life-giving water, right? So I trust this company. They, they, serve, they also do homeopathics as well. I believe he was a na naturopathic doctor, Vogel. So if any if na naturopathics are my first source of uh, holistic medicine. So if a naturopath is going to put something like that out, and they've been out like 80 years, then I'm like interested in it. All right, coming along quite nicely, I'm going to add some wine. What kind of wine? Oh, this is Bridge Lane. It's a sustainable from Long Island. This is a Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. We always cook with wine. Sometimes you put in food. Too. There you go. <laughs> Just enough. <laughs> So that's going to cook down, and then at the end I'll add my herbs. So what else would you add to this to make this your own? Like, are you thinking right now, oh, I would like to see that in that, or that in that, or something like that. Does it, anybody want to make a squash? Okay, the squash. I was going to do that, but I was doing the donut squash soup. Exactly. Exactly. I find that the squash doesn't absorb as much as the zucchini, so it doesn't get as soggy. So it is a good place. Yes, yes. Winter yeah. versus, yeah, you can do turnips. So if you were to do, let's say you would do a root vegetable for to say, right? You could do, I wouldn't do beets, but I would do uh, rotabaga, carrots, uh, turnips. You could do it with black beans and put in Mexican spices. Doesn't have to be for to say. You know, with the wine and the garlic and the onions, it's a little lighter. The thing with these mushrooms is they're very dark. So, so it's helping make kind of like a darker sauce, right? Yes. Even though there was a element of white wine. So I don't know about you, but I think this smells really good. If anybody wants to come over and tinkle with, you smell it. Wow. Uh, excuse me, how did you make the stock? Because us on the other side oh, of the table okay. didn't hear that. Oh, okay. So I um. Take the butternut, squash, lob off the stem, the top, cut it lengthways, lengthwise, scoop out the seeds, put them in a pot. You can also, if you're peeling it, you're not going to peel these because you're going to roast the butternut, you put them flat side down on the baking sheet pan and you put them in the oven. And as they're roasting, you are making your stock just from the seeds in the pulp. And then you yeah. strain it. I didn't really strain this too much. I don't mind it. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like just a little bit. So, so. As much as you think by your eye. As far that, as the it's like you, to get the right. Yeah, like uh, so. I'll show you. I made the stock in a pot, in this pot. 
and I had to make that soup eight quarts that was um, about eight squash maybe about eight to ten different sizes so I might throw in a sm few smaller ones and all the pulp was in here and the water was about up to here right and then you let it sit and then you drain if you're going to peel your squash and cube it or dice it and make it something else, you can use the peels as well. Just make sure it's organic and it's washed. So you can use the peels, you can use the, So we use everything in the kitchen, right? Do you use that stock in anything? You can Absolutely. You can make a butternut risotto, you know? With yes. the, and then you're dicing with a little onion and, and um, carrots. And then you could use, I'll tell you, another trick is you don't have a vegetable stock. You have the urban mare, you have a pot of water, use the urban mare, it's like better than a bullion. I don't use bullion or anything like that. Right? So it's very processed, it's very condensed, it's very salty. So things like that. Do you put the, 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 the urban mare in your stock as well? No. No. Just Never salt stock. Because that's going to be a base for other dishes. And then if it's already salted, you can't gauge how much salt to put in the other thing. Always so only salt your final product. Okay. So this is pretty much good to go. I turned it down a little bit, and I'm just going to add the beans now. But there is one thing I left out. So what I had I want to show you was how to make the thick gravy in here. So... Let's see if they do. Are you looking for arrowroot? No, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. You can use arrowroot, but I was going to use the sorghum flour. So what I would do at this point is I put the sorghum flour with water, make a slurry, and then see I have this? I would just whisk that in and it would thicken like this. All right, and I want to show you that. And then now I'm just going to add the beans. And it depends how many beans you want. Do you want more vegetables, you want more beans, it's up to you. So, you know, going by recipes is great, but once you learn a recipe, Use your, your thoughts and your imagination to interchange the ingredients. So, so you're not what does stuck. Fricassee mean? That's, that's a good question. That's a French term. And if you look it up, there's different various dishes in different cultures that are not only French, but it's basically a stew. It's basically a French stew with white wine. And that's basically it. Good? Easy. And then I'm going to serve that over rice. This is the one I made for you, for you before. It's been sitting here and really probably overcooking. Okay. So that's, I made it in a, I, I actually did, I did the skillet so you guys can see it. Because if I used the brazier, I wouldn't you wouldn't have seen it because of the high. So I want you to see it. So I used the low one. So if you use a pot that has a higher, less shallow side, the liquid's gonna stay in. You're gonna get more liquid, right? Crazy. Where do you get their pops from? <laughs> I, I just saw this. I'm so eyeing. I get them wholesale. Um, you can order from like uh, Tiger Chef sells things like this. They're so inexpensive. The restaurant depot can? Not like this. Okay. I don't. Uh, Tiger Chef, I think they're in Connecticut. They're a good uh, source for. Yeah, they sell to. You don't have a wholesale account. Stainless steel. I don't use any aluminum in my kitchen. Um, my sheet pans are aluminum. I always make sure there's a silk hat, or a, I don't use parchment paper because it's waste. I have reusable sheet pan, pan covers, liner. These might have aluminum inside the core, put, so it radiates the heat better. Than, but this is a stainless steel. I won't allow any aluminum to touch the food. We try to put everything in glass, not glass, I can't have glass, it's commercial kitchen, it's illegal. But uh, we have uh, the carbonite containers and I use those once something is cooled off. Okay, so you should never put anything hot in something like this. This is like leaching poison. So this is like 
you can't, you know, as green as we are here, it's so hard to keep away from plastic because I still have to have wrap and I still have to have the gloves. Yeah. You know, like the Vitamix blenders? Yeah. That mm -hmm. Okay. So, any other questions or anything? I can plate one and, and, and show it. Why do you get mushrooms like that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those were foraged by somebody who's allowed to sell to restaurants. Those are uh, actually made by uh, a local farmer, grown by a local farmer. He has a huge wood pile and logs. So, he makes them with logs. His wife is an acupuncturist that I work with. So she picks which ones for what season for what health benefits. So those so those are basically the ones growing in my yard, right? The, like the <laughs> puffy ones. Don't eat anything from your yard. I already did. No, I'm just they, but it looked like them. There's great mycological <laughs> groups you can join and go on which, walks and which, stuff. So what was the name of the first one? Wine sap was the dark yeah. one. Wine sap. Yeah, and the other one is called power puff, but to tell you the truth, I can't, I don't know what the uh, exact, like, botanical name is. But I know they're hard to find. Yeah, that's and it's great. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Have um, you ever used lines, main mushrooms? Yes. And then you use them okay? Lines, yes. Um, also, in season right now is maitake and oyster. Oh, oyster so and maitake are right now. Like people will come in, you gotta come to my yard, I have all these over. And I'm like, well, I really can't do that. But like if you want to pick them and give them to me, and I'll use them at my home kitchen, but I can't really like them. But yeah. Nice. So is that ready now? Yeah, it should be ready. I think that the Brussels sprouts may be a little different. All right, so I mentioned the nutritional benefits of mushrooms, right? Draw things out of the body, toxins and everything, and then help move it out. Okay, so the Brussels sprouts, cruciferous vegetable, excellent tumor fighting, same family as broccoli, cabbage, kale. I don't know if you guys follow a blood type diet, but some O's are a little bit um, susceptible if they eat too much cruciferous to hypothyroidism. So if you know you have an O, you may just want to, you know, don't drink kale smoothies every day. Um, I, when I really have anything with beta carotene except the soup that you ate, right? The, the, the orange, like carrots, squash, a little bit of the peppers, a little bit. Peppers, I think, are more in the vitamin A, C, and E. I mean, not so much E, but A and C. You know, I, I studied each food and, and, and thinking about the differences and, and what they all do, but like the simplest thing is colors, right? As many colors, and, and if it's seasonal, the earth is giving you what you need to eat when you need to eat it. Everything we have is from the earth, stuff that we need. So, so all that combined, like, you know, how many times have you heard where do you get your protein from? You know, it's like protein is in almost everything. So the beans, the, I love beans and I can digest them thankfully. A lot of people don't really can. But every bean is different. White bean is different from chickpea, it's different from black, red, etc. kidney. So I call beans the powerhouse of food because not only do they are they a great source of protein and carbs, but they're just so good for heart health and, and digestion. Um, so in terms of digestion, uh, everything that we're having here uh, should be easy to digest unless you have a bean situation in terms of flatulence or indigestion. So I would suggest if anybody has an issue with beans, if the beans are, you're new to beans, try one at a time, like for a week, and then don't have any beans for the next week, and just like see how it goes, and then introduce another bean, and then you can go so like, believe it or not, kidney beans are great for the kidney. It's really true. Eastern medicine, five element theory of Chinese medicine, they look at different elements and each element pertains to a part of the body, type of food, constitutional, emotions, and all that. So it's so interesting because different foods are tied to different organs and emotions and things like that. So if you have coconut milk, and you feel a little flighty, well, that's probably not grounding for you, right? So you need to listen to your body and your body signals. 
great book. I, I like to recommend it's called The Encyclopedia of Whole Foods. It's by Rebecca Wood. It's about this thin. It's fine. It's alphabetical. And it's just like, it tells you like every aspect of each food, each item, like where it came from, what the indigenous property, you know, where it's from. The Ayurvedic component to it and what vitamins and minerals are in it and what, what's best for, right? showed you the ruin here you would see this happening in here so it's kind of more thick thicker and then now you can sop it up when you have your rice buy buy from your local farmer buy local it is just amazingly I was at the Terry Town one today oh nice hopefully I'll make it to the early summer tomorrow I've never been there to the Terry Town one anyway, oh it's really I've been awesome. to Pleasantville I love it yes Pleasantville well yes but I've never been the to the Irving. Well, that one's yeah. really big, the Pleasantville one. Yeah, you know, the other ones are a little more scaled down, a little smaller. But, you know. Well, thank you, Chef Lori, yeah, for sharing your well. amazing yeah. kitchen yeah. and yeah. your yeah. amazing yeah. white bean yeah. fricassee. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for coming.